Hey y'all, we're Ellick and Cindy and we're sharing the journey. If y'all been watching our channel for a while, y'all already know, but if you haven't, we've been on the road for the past five years, work camping our way across America. We sold everything, basically ran away from the kids, and here we are, currently in Montana. Now, I have, I say I, because Cindy's the beauty and the charm of the operation and I do all the background stuff. So I've received numerous emails over the last two weeks asking about either domiciles or how we get our mail or where do we get a driver's license if we don't have a house. So we're going to cover that today. And uh, we checked out a lot of different programs out there. But what we decided on was Escapees RV Club. Now, we hit the road in May of 2019, and we waited six months. We were sending all our mail to my aunt's house, so that's one option, is you can use a family member's residence to get your mail, have them sort through it, and just use their address for everything. The problem is with us in South Carolina is property taxes were eating us alive. And so if you're not familiar with how the property taxes work, in South Carolina, not only do you have to pay state income tax, but you have to pay a property tax, like on our car, which at that time was, I think, a 2000, um, 16 Ford Edge, you know, the property taxes on that were still like $400 a year. And the big thing was the property tax on the motorhome. Now, we live in a 32-foot Tiffin open road gas motorhome, and our taxes, property taxes, on this, the first year, were $6,000 plus. And it goes down a little bit every year. Because it was brand new. But still, $6,000. So we had traded in our Coachman Murata, and when we bought the Tiffin, we didn't have to pay the property taxes at first because we just transferred tags. But come August, when the tags were due, I had to write a check for $6,000, and I just wasn't willing to do that. So we started doing a bunch of research online, and we found that there were th three states that were best for RVers. I thought there were four. I just know that we had it narrowed it down to Texas, Florida, and South Dakota. And for South Dakota to be a residence, you have to stay one night in that state. So you'd have to like have a campground fee sheep or a place from a hotel where you stayed the night you stayed the night they consider you eligible to be a resident um but we were in we were working a job down in aiken i think no we were in virginia we were in virginia and we weren't going to be able to get all the way to south dakota no. No. And then what was it? We were calculating as far as money oh, and time-wise. To get there. How, how much money it was going to cost for us to get to South Dakota from where we were. And then... You had to go back every so many years. Right, that's and right. And we weren't sure if we were going to be going back to that area that often. I mean, now we would have known that we would be. Right. But it was going to cost so much money, and we didn't want to spend that money yeah. to get there and then to get to our next job. So what we found so we out was that. in Texas, we could do all the paperwork online as far as registering the motorhome, registering the Ford, and getting um, our 
domicile set up through Escapees. Escapees has all the forms on their website. I'll link their website down below. And if you join Escapees, um, they have what's called a lamplighter program. If I if you put in our member number, which I'll put down below, um, I think it six members we get x number of dollars off our next year's reservation i'm not really sure um this talks about the lamp ladder program it says we've never even looked at 60 dollars. so with six of them we get 60 dollars off a, a gift certificate towards our next membership but what i liked about it was um in florida had a similar program except for i hate bringing politics in at the time the politics in Florida was kind of wonky, and it gave us a little bit of concern. They were talking about changing some of the laws as far as taxes. Well, every year it comes up because Florida is a big retirement state, and a lot of people go there to retire. And then they keep changing their laws as to whether they're going to let people domicile there and they don't really live there and that sort of thing. Right. So we It's it's always a rocky road in Florida. So we chose Texas. We filled out all the paperwork and within a couple of weeks we were still working in Virginia. They mailed us our tags to Virginia mm -hmm. and then we have had 90 days if I'm remembering correctly. We had 90 days to get to Texas to get our driver's license. And so that's what we did. We finished the job we were on in Virginia. We drove to Texas, which was close to our next job. Matter of fact, I think our next job was in Oklahoma, just up above on Lake Eufaula, was just up above where we were going. So it worked out fine. So we waited the three months and drove down to Texas. We didn't wait three months to drive down. It was almost three months. Okay. And um, then we got our driver's license. And so our address is now Livingston, Texas, because Texas allows you to use not a post office box as a address, but it's, it's sort of like a post office box, but it's at the Escapees Campground. There's probably thousands of people who live on Rainbow Road in Livingston, Texas, because I think Escapees is one of the largest um, domicile, full-time RV clubs in the country. So that takes care of domicile because the government makes you live somewhere. You can't just live in your motorhome and not have a permanent address for tax bases, for voting bases, for census bases, and all that. So you have to pick a place. We drove, we chose Texas and we chose to do it with escapees. So then the next part is how do you get your mail? Well, let me back up a minute. I think we pay $159 or $179 a year for our membership. And that includes basic mail service. And then we pay $10 more a month so they scan the envelopes so every time we get a letter at escapees they scan the envelope and send me an email and then i'm able to go into the app check the letter and you have three choices they can either junk it or they can open it and scan the insides and we've had that done twice I'm just going to say a handful of times. Yeah, and then the third thing is save for next mailing. And I usually get them to send our mail once a month. I go on the app. I put send. I think I've, I started off with $25 in our mail account, and I set it on automatic renewal. So whenever it gets low, they just charge me $25 and put that much postage. So once a month, we have our mail sent. I would say 70% of our mail they destroy and then twice we've had to actually have them open the letter and scan it one time we got a toll bill from North Carolina and we had not been in North Carolina 
So we opened it up and it was actually our son who was using our extra car at the time that we no longer have, had driven through into North Carolina, gone on a toll road, didn't pay the toll, and so they said Well he didn't get the toll bill because it comes because it came to us. Right. Because it was still registered under me. So when they, they scanned the mail and then we were able to print it out on our printer and we just paid the seven dollar toll fee and on with our lives. And then destroy oh and the other time was when we got monetized here on Google. We were filling out our paperwork. And to verify your address, they send you a letter with a code in it. So I had it scanned so we could finish up our Google AdSense stuff. That's the only two times I can think we've used the scan. Um, and then we're able to use that address for all our taxes and all our legal documents. And then the last part of this is taxes, which is something you're never going to escape. So the other reason we chose Texas is they don't have any state income tax. And so I get a small retirement check from the state of South Carolina. And till this date, they still take state income tax out. But I get a refund of over $1,000 every year because we don't live in South Carolina. And Texas doesn't have any state income tax. So I get refunded all that money. I don't know why South Carolina, I have called and called and called and tried to get it to where they quit taking South Carolina income tax out. Because they have your updated address. They have my updated address and I've even filled out the form and they say that the process through the state is they collect the money. So we don't have to fill out a Texas state income tax we just do federal and then we have to do south carolina because i need to get my money back and then this year we've worked in montana and texas again no state filing in texas so we do a federal income tax a south carolina tax and this year we'll do a montana state tax on the money we've made here but it's amazing by using texas as our domicile how much money we save in taxes because we're not paying the six thousand dollars it'd probably be down to about forty five hundred by now because this coach is five years old but we save property taxes that we had in our in our old state not sure how your state does it and we save on state income tax now my understanding is if you own a house in texas their house property tax is really high because that's how they make it so you don't pay taxes on your car and that sort of stuff. We don't have to worry about that because we don't have a house. And so, you know, we save our first year, we saved $7,000 between state income tax and property tax just by changing our domicile from South Carolina to Texas. And then I guess the last thing that we really probably need to hit on this is, you know, to be able to vote and to be counted in the census, you've got to be from a state. So we've never actually been present in Texas at voting time, but we've done mail in mm -hmm. ballot like mail the military ballot. does. And what we've chosen to do as a couple is we only vote on the federal stuff. We don't vote on any of the Polk County, Livingston yeah, the county stuff. stuff because we don't. We're not there. We don't it doesn't feel affect like, us. Well, it's not that. Even if it doesn't affect us, we don't feel like we're there. We don't feel like we know the people well enough to make a good decision. Right. You know. So we just choose not to. So we'll vote for, you know, president, vice president. We'll vote on um, state legislatures, people that, you know, make the laws that allow us to use Texas as our domicile. But as far as local, local stuff, we don't do any voting. So down below in the description, I'll put all the contact information for escapees. 
I'll put our membership number that if you choose to, you can put us down as a referral for escapees. Um, you know, no pressure. And the other thing that we get is your the jury summons. Oh, let me tell you this. Yeah, so we've had gotten jury summons twice. The Polk County is so in tune because... Of so escapee members make up the vast majority of the town or the of the county Maybe. of the county and so they really i mean like like this letter right here i just paid to get our car done this is from tatum white assessor and collector of taxes polk county well we're not there to do it so i called her and said you know they required through this year an inspection I said, we're not there to get the vehicles inspected. She goes, ah, just write on the top of your bill, escapees, no inspection, out of state. And they waived that for us, and we were able to register the Jeep without going back to Texas. I think we've only had it inspected once in five years. No, I think we've had it done more than that. But didn't we just have it done? Yeah, we just had that done, but yeah. the motorhome we have because only had we were in one. Texas. Supposedly, what you're supposed to do is, if you're out of state when the bill comes in, and you're supposed to have it inspected and send your inspection sticker or whatever in, um, the net if you're out of state. The next time you're going through Texas or are in Texas, you're supposed to go ahead and get the vehicle inspected. Right, yeah. And we do that. We do do that, yeah. But I digress because we were talking about jury summons. So there's a phone number we can call. You just click like one for confirming you'll be there. Or two, escapees member out of state. And there are some escapees members that do go back. Yes. I've talked to that, that if they get a jury summons, they feel like it's part of their due diligence and their duty yep. to participate in that. And they will go. And we just push the button saying we're out of state because we've always been out of state. If we were there, I would do it. Even if we were a couple hours away, I'd probably Right, go do down it. and do it just because. Now, when we went and got our driver's license, we did stay at escapees at escapees at our at our home address. The only time we've ever been there at the campground at the campground. It's a really nice campground, but they also have or had at the time like an assisted living portion of the campground where you can park your camper there and you pay your you know monthly rent or whatever. But I believe they have like nurses that bring you your pills and well, it was a long term. They had long-term sites, and there would be sometimes some people there recovering from being sick or surgery or just being out of the hospital or something like that, and they needed extra care. Well, I'm sure you pay for these services. Oh, yes. But um, they would have people come check on you, people bring you food if you needed it. Well, yeah, that and, kind of thing. And there's a ton of other things Escapees offers that we haven't mentioned. They've got RV University. They've got the program where they will weigh your coach to right. make sure you're not overweight. They've got a discount camping membership. They've got all these other services that we really don't use. We joined for the domicile yeah. and the mail and the help with registering and don't they have a driving school or something yeah they have a driving school they have a whole host of stuff yeah. you get a big packet so we love escapees and that's how it's we it's been very simple yes and that's how we have domiciled legally that's how we get our mail legally that's how we vote legally that's how we pay our taxes legally so check them out if you are thinking about this lifestyle and are trying to figure out the ins and outs of everything because i'm telling you we watched hours of youtube trying to figure all this out 
and did a lot of, I called escapees and talked to them for 45 minutes on the phone. Everybody's been helpful, but, um, so if you ever have any questions, uh, in the about section is got our email, which I think it's sharing the journey official at gmail.com. You can email us and we use those questions lots of time as content for our YouTube channel. So please like, subscribe, share, follow all those things and go back and watch some of our other videos. They're all super. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Until next time, happy camping and stay safe out there.